serve a God who knows and declares the end from the beginning. Telling us about supernatural speed and overcoming stagnation when nobody knew that there was going to be a situation where everybody was going to be locked down. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 to 21 to 31. Has thou not known Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the heavens, of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increased strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. And not faint. The Lord bless his word. In Jesus name. The subject is. Supernatural speed. And this is part one. And our objective tonight. Is to understand the foundation. For supernatural speed. Every time God speaks a thing, he tells us what he is willing and ready to do. He's telling us about supernatural speed means he wants to do something in that regard. I'd like you to know there is no distance in the spirit. Wherever you are around the world connected to this conference tonight, something will shift in your life. While I sat in the office before coming out for this conference tonight, I realized that this is the first time in the history of this ministry that we'll have a conference that is online. And the Spirit of the Lord ministered to me and said, this first time also is going to be the beginning of something that we haven't seen before. This is an unusual conference in many ways. We are about to experience what we haven't experienced before. This conference is going to give you results, light inside direction that you have never seen before. So get set. Want to understand the foundation for supernatural speed as our objective tonight. The whole world just passed through a season of absolute lockdown. In some places, it is still on. And this is not a situation where things slowed down. This is a situation of absolute standstill. Things stood still. And I have identified about seven characteristics of the season we just passed through that we are coming out of. The first thing that has happened so far is frustration and exasperation. A situation where people just feel absolutely frustrated with what is going on. Rich, poor, white, black. There was a, 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 a climate of universal frustration and exasperation where you are just sweating and wondering what's going on. Number two is the, is the climate of desperation, sorry, depression and despair. 
We heard stories of those who took their lives and committed suicide in this season. Desperation, depression, despair. People went into addictive behaviors. Behaviors that they left before. Some returned back to drunkenness. Some returned to pornographic things and things that will, will, just, will just hook them on in this season of the frustration and exasperation in this season of depression and despair i see also thirdly exhaustion and weariness people came to the point where they practically got tired with the situation tired tired of being tired sleep tired wake up tired and just sit through the day tired and exhausted that's the climate that the whole world passed through just now. And then that leads to number four is deprivation and scarcity. Deprivation. Well, I mean, the kind of calls we received in this season. Calls, even up till today, we are receiving calls of people struggling to feed their families. Struggling to put food on the table for children. People struggling in many ways with many things. Deprivation, scarcity, poverty, empty-handedness. People lost their jobs. People are laid off from their jobs. Some people receive just a portion of their salaries. Some nothing at all in the season that we have we, we just passed through and we had that season of desperation of, of deprivation and scarcity and then the major one is the stagnation of vision and plans the stagnation of visions and plans the plans people had for the year by the time it is may i should be here by the time it is march this and that should happen by the time it is april this and that should happen all those visions all those plans and stood still we know of people who were planning their wedding the wedding couldn't hold the wedding plan failed why because i mean there was not meant to be any kind of public gathering of any sort social gatherings of any sort was not permitted am i speaking to anybody here at all and we had that kind of situation around the world people who had financial goals people who had ministerial goals people who had various career goals academic goals it got stagnated because we pass through a season, still coming out of that season. Stagnation of vision and plans. And then, in some cases, it's not just stagnation, it, 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 it is retrogression and regression. That was number six, retrogression and regression. Actually, some people's lives went backward. There are people whose spiritual lives almost literally shut down. There are people whose prayer life practically died. I got a, a message from a very desperate pastor. He said in the part of the, the state where he's ministering, where, where he is, uh, he, as they say, the lockdown is, is relaxed now. He, he's coming back to church and then the people just left. The, some, some leaders, some kind of people, all manner of demonic gang up and conspiracy. Retrogression, regression. You see, when you are spending money and you are not making money, that is retrogression. There's things are going backward. When, at, when the account was, was in the positive and then now it's in the negative, things are going backward. There are many, of course, in this season, as scripture said, when men say they are cast down, you are saying there is a lifting up. There are people in this season that saw the lifting up according to scripture, but the majority of people saw retrogression and regression, things going backward. And the final is the confusion and perplexity what is going on what is really going on when will this thing end how far what are we going to do confusion and perplexity and all manner of confusionists and all manner of theories and several things flying in the air confusion 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 governments of nations confuse some lying to the people all manner of confusions in the air What do we do at a time like this? What do we look up to? Three things I will say. All hope is not lost because we serve a God. Three things you must know about the God we serve. First of all, we serve a God. The reason why our hope is not lost, the reason why these situations can't prevail is because, number one, we have the God. We serve the God of drastic intervention. The God of drastic intervention. In Psalm 126, 
verse 1 all the way to verse 5. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our th tongue with singing. And said there among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Turn again our, our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Now we can stop there. We serve the God of drastic intervention. Drastic. Drastic intervention. Very drastic. Which I believe is what we're about to step into. What we're about to start seeing as the outcome of this situation. It is when men are down to nothing that God is up to something. It is when it is darkest that light becomes very meaningful. We serve the God of drastic intervention. Secondly, we serve the God of total restoration. Is the God of complete restoration, total restoration. That is, it doesn't matter what is lost. It doesn't matter what is taken. It doesn't matter what has happened wrong. We serve the God of total restoration. In Joel chapter 2 verse 25 all the way to verse 27. He said, therefore, Joel chapter 2 verse 25 all the, day, all the way to verse 27. He said, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And that is, I will restore to you the years that the caterpillar, the palmer woman, everything is, I will restore is the God of complete total restoration. If you remember the, the situation that happened to David when the Amalekites smote him in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. After he asked God, what do I do? And God said, pursue, overtake, recover all in verse 8. In verse 19 and 20, the Bible said, and David recovered all. There was nothing lacking to them. Neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. I am here to announce to somebody and prophesy across this airwaves and anywhere and where we are gathered together, where the lockdown has already been relaxed. I prophesy everything the enemy took from you in this season, everything the enemy deprived you of in this season, everything the enemy slowed down in your life in this season. I prophesy restoration. I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery in the name of Jesus. Take your seat. We serve the God of total restoration. The God of total restoration. And finally, we serve the God of supernatural acceleration. That is speed. The God of supernatural acceleration. He is the God of supernatural acceleration. The God that will make you to catch up your speed. Catch up your speed. Catch up your speed. Catch up your speed. We read it already in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 and in verse 31. He said, they that wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall now. Let, let me read it in full from verse 28. Read it in full. He said, now we talked about weariness and tiredness. He, all right. He giveth power to the faint. He giveth power to the tired. Exhausted. From COVID-19 lockdown. To them that has no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. People are exhausted and tired. The young men utterly fall. He said, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Every spell of tiredness.
tiredness and weariness and discouragement and despair that is upon everyone now frustration exasperation depression despair exhaustion tiredness the spell of scarcity shortage stagnation around your life and destiny retrogression and regression the spell of confusion and perplexity I declare them arrested right now in the name of Jesus from this first day of this conference something is changing in your life in Jesus name Isaiah again chapter 40 verse 31 he said they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagle beloved this conference is dedicated to supernatural speed the recovery of every stagnated year now what is supernatural speed let's see how fast we can go what is supernatural speed or acceleration supernatural speed is speed or acceleration happening at the frequency of heaven speed or acceleration that is happening at the frequency of heaven is not happening at an earthly frequency at the frequency of heaven speed or acceleration happening at the frequency of heaven what is determining your movement is not from the earth here at the frequency of heaven number two supernatural speed or acceleration is speed or acceleration happening at the pace of god at the pace of god at the pace of god person at the keyboard you might need to increase your speed speed or acceleration happening at the pace of god speed or acceleration happening at the frequency of heaven number one and speed or acceleration that is happening at the pace of god that is you are in step like the bible said that abraham walked with god ah uh, enoch walked with god abraham walked before me you are taking you are making progress and, and your pace is at the pace of god god is determining your steps and your pace per time that is supernatural speed or acceleration what is supernatural speed number three supernatural speed is speed or acceleration that is extraordinary and superhuman it is extraordinary it is superhuman it is above human it is extraordinary it is superhuman when people look at our lives and say this cannot be ordinary this cannot be normal this is not human extraordinary superhuman what is supernatural speed or acceleration number four it is speed or acceleration that is not accountable for by human effort resources or wisdom it is speed or acceleration that is not accountable for or that can that is not accounted for by human effort resources or wisdom speed or acceleration that is not accounted for by human effort resources or wisdom it is not your effort that is making you to move like that it is not your your your, your wisdom that is making you to move like that it is not your resources that is making you to move like that it is god making you to move like that somebody is stepping into that phrase after this season in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus number five supernatural speed or acceleration is speed or acceleration that happens by a supernatural amplification of action again it is speed or acceleration that happens by a supernatural amplification of action a supernatural amplification of action that is god is amplifying your action to give you acceleration this is the meaning of that 
you take one step and get the result of those who took a thousand steps there is an amplification of your action an amplification of your steps you took one step you get the result of a thousand steps what you are able to see as a result in a week is what ordinary people see in a year or in years there is an amplification there is a fertilization of effort your effort is fertilized your action is amplified and you are able and, 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 and it can be said of you it is not by power it is not by might but it is by my spirit say the lord where others are using brute power and using human connections and using whatever they can use for you it is not by power for you it is not by might but by the spirit of the lord that shall be our testimony in this season in the name of jesus Jesus, Mahashago Bagadagalagayabada. Supernatural speed. Speed or acceleration happening at the frequency of heaven. Speed or acceleration happening at the pace of God. Speed or acceleration that is extraordinary and superhuman. Speed or acceleration that is not accounted for, cannot be accounted for by human effort, by human resources or human wisdom. And then it is speed or acceleration that happens by a supernatural amplification of action. I like this one. A supernatural amplification of action. You look like a genius to people. You, you, you spend one hour and you get results that people spend 24 hours to get. Is you, you get understanding, light, insight that it takes days to get. That is speed. It's coming for somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is coming. Let's look at scripture and see examples of supernatural speed or acceleration. Out of scripture. First example was the example of Elijah. Elijah transported by the spirit of the Lord. Transported by the spirit of the Lord. When Elijah prophesied to Ahab and he said that there shall be no rain, no dew in the land of Israel except by his word. And it disappeared. They began to look for Elijah until one of the king's strong men, his name Obadiah, decided to look, was asked to look, I mean to go and graze the, 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 the flock. And then while he was out there he found Elijah in first Kings chapter 18 verse 7 all the way to verse 12 first Kings chapter 18 verse 7 and as Obadiah was in the way behold Elijah met him and he knew him and fell on his face and said "Art thou that my Lord Elijah and he answered him I am go and tell thy Lord behold Elijah is here and he said what sin have I what have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me. As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord has not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there, he would take an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou seest, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from thee, that the spirit of the Lord shall carry, carry thee, whither I knew not. He didn't say the spirit of the Lord shall direct you. He didn't say the spirit of the Lord shall instruct you or lead you. He shall carry you. That is a transpiritation. A, 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 a spiritual transportation. A transpiritation. I'm okay with the scripture now. A transpiration. A, the spirit of the Lord shall carry you. Carry. So Elijah was a man that understood how to be carried in the spirit. No wonder. When it was time to go to heaven, he was carried like that. He was carried like that. He was familiar with such carriage. He was used to such carriage. It was his normal mode of operation. It was his normal mode of transportation. Beloved brothers and sisters, if God can carry a man, a 
and shift him to a location of his desire at the speed of light then god can shift your destiny like that then god can shift your vision like that he can shift your career like that he can shift every department of your life like that there, you see when one thing we must know about god is that we serve a god that is not limited by time it's not limited by space it's not limited by matter it's not limited by time that is he doesn't move he doesn't it's not he it does it's not it, it cannot time cannot limit him if it is 658 here now and he wants to uh, and he wants to be found in new york city by the same time he's there it's not limited by time it's not limited by space it's not limited by matter he doesn't need a door to enter a place that's the god we are serving and that same god has the capacity to give you acceleration that will shock you i read a story some time ago some people were praying in the spirit inside their car and they were traveling on a journey that was like three hours and they were praying and just fellowshipping with the lord the journey was about three hours and they were fellowshipping with the lord and fellowshipping and just and suddenly they look up and they saw welcome to so and so the town they were going they looked at the time it was 45 minutes and it was it was impossible for them to understand what happened no, no. i mean they did it the car didn't fly there was no extra speed no i mean even if you oversped it is not possible to cover a journey of three hours in 45 minutes they looked up and said welcome welcome what happened transpiration it looks like a, along the line along the journey god shortened the journey somehow he shifted time somehow he just he just made time to to just to just interpose somehow and they just arrived now god could have done it just the moment they left they could have arrived there on the spot but he just wanted to just not to not to over frighten them is somebody here hearing something here that is the god we serve that is the kind of god we serve elijah was carried if i live here the spirit of god will carry you if god can carry a person he can carry his purpose in your life to where it needs to go he can carry your destiny he can carry your assignment he can carry his program out in your life without the limitation of time and the limitation of space example number two first kings chapter 18 verse marshall kobala verse 44 having understood first kings chapter 18 verse 7 to 12 where we read this should not be under be difficult to understand because it is the same chapter first kings 18 that is elijah running faster than the horse in first kings chapter running faster than the royal chariot in first kings chapter 18 and in verse 44 to 46 first kings 18 44 and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said behold there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand and he said go up say unto ahab prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and ahab rode and went to jezreel and the hand of the lord was upon elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran before ahab to the entrance of jezreel ahab started the journey ahead while elijah went to pray and pray the rain cloud and it says about 21 miles from the, the distance covered and he finished the prayer and then came out of the prayer place and began to run and caught up with the horse and overtook the horse <laughs> and then entered the city before the horse that started before him it's one thing to it's one thing to to i don't even know the perspective it's one thing to say the person was able to run with a horse at the same space it's another thing to say he was able to catch up with the horse that started the race before him but it's another thing altogether that he caught up with the horse overtook the horse on foot 
When last did you hear that a taxi cab on the road overtook the presidential convoy? Or that, uh, or that a passenger aircraft overtook a presidential jet? No, it was supernatural, supernatural, superhuman, extra normal, extra usual, unordinary. <laughs> hey! Like peke daga laga yaga daga laga yaga da. I announce in the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord is coming upon somebody. Is coming upon somebody, and that hand of the Lord is going to cause you to do the unusual, unbelievable. What will be the imagination of people? Cause you to overtake those who began before you. Is coming in the name of Jesus. That was Elijah, Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 44 to 46. Let me read to you this one. It excites me so much. The master and the disciples in the boat. The master and the disciples. This happened in John chapter 6, verse 16 to verse 21. Please get various translations ready. After I read King James Version, I read the Living Bible, the message. Bible in basic English if it's, if it's available. Now, John chapter 6 verse 16 to 21. And when the evening was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over, to this, over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. That is, they were traveling alone. And that is a subject for another day. Maybe another day within the conference. And the sea arose. By reason of a great wind that blew. If these people started this journey by 6 p.m. Let's say. Because normally journeys on the sea. You want to start while it is light. If less, It could have been 4 maybe but 6. And then they. So when they had rode about 4 and 20 or 30 followers. They see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near unto the ship and they were afraid. But he said unto them, it is I, be not afraid. So they willingly received him into the ship and immediately he entered the ship. The ship was at the land whither they went. Immediately 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 that 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 word there is not there accidental immediately the storm had been preventing them from moving the moment the master of the storm arrived immediately show me another translation maybe the living bible version no 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 just just verse 21 then they were willing to let him in. And immediately the boat was where they were going. <laughs> Look at it again. Look at it again. That, that is very, very drastic. That is very, very drastic. That is very drastic. Put it again, verse 21. They, they, they willingly, that was. Then they were willing to let him in. And immediately the boat was where they were going. Once he entered the boat, the next thing they saw was that they were where they were going. Two things happened there. Two things. Immediately they ste he stepped in there, they were where they were going. Distance collapsed. Interval evaporated. There was a unity of their position with their destination. <laughs> Oh my God. Are you hearing what I'm saying at all? Their position and their destination instantly united. Where they were and where they were meant to be became one. <laughs> all right. You have the message Bible. Let's look at it. Or the, the Bible in basic English. He said, Then they readily took him into the boat and straight away the boat was at the land. To which they were going. That is, the boat disappeared from the water and instantly was at the land. 
where they were going. You have the message? So they took him on board. In no time, they reached land. Now look at this. The exact spot they were headed to. They reached land. The exact spot. That is, his arrival did not only speed up their journey, he guaranteed their exact location, exact destination. The boat didn't overspeed and speed past where they were going. Or stop beyond where, before where, where they were going. That is what we're talking about, supernatural speed. If this can happen to a boat, it can happen to a life. If this can happen to a boat, it can happen to a spiritual life. It can happen to a destiny journey. It can happen to a family. It can happen to a mentality. It can happen to your giftings and your graces. Masha Kopa. That is, your gift shifted. Your, 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 your wisdom shifted. Your, your, your understanding shifted. Everything shifted. That was the master and the disciples. There was both acceleration and the arrival at, at destination. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. In Acts chapter 8, verse 39 and verse 40. These things are all there in the scripture. When they came up out of the water. The spirit of the Lord caught up, transported away Philip like Elijah. That the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found. I'm sure he himself was shocked where he found himself. He was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Wherever you are needed, after this conference, you will be found there. That realm, that face, that space, that territory, that location, that region, that realm in the spirit where you need to be found, that realm in your giftings and your graces where you need to be found, that realm in God, that realm in the anointed where you need to be found. In the name of Jesus, after this conference, you shall be found there. In the name of Jesus. He was found. He was found. Because that was where he was needed. You still remember the story of the lady who was kidnapped. And sat in the midst of the kidnappers. And sang the song. You are always there to help. You are always there to help me. Even when no one else was there. You are always there for me. Even when I can't feel you, even when I cannot trace you, I still have faith in your word that you are always there for me. And she disappeared and reappeared somewhere else. This is possible. If God can do that, wherever the enemy has imprisoned your life, caged your destiny, caged your mentality, and caged your character, the same God who transported that lady out will bring you out in the name of Jesus. Final example, Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle's speed among the Apostles. He had speed that was not natural. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in verse 9. The Bible said, For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not qualified to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. He said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And that grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet it is not me, but the grace of God which was with me. Next verse. All right. Paul the Apostle was the late comer that became the frontliner by supernatural speed. Super natural speed. 
when supernatural speed is upon you, it's no longer a matter of who started first. That was why the Bible said it's not of him that will it or of him that run it, but of God that shows mercy. I like you to get ready because a mantle that is, that is going to cause you to run and to speed is coming in the name of Jesus Christ. In conclusion tonight, what, are, what is the necessity of supernatural speed? The necessity or the, 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 the profitability of supernatural speed the profitability or necessity of supernatural speed. Very, very important. Why should there be speed? Number one, I'll put it like this and then say number one. Supernatural speed is necessary for, number one, the escape or escape of stagnation and frustration. If life must move, the escape, the escape of stagnation and frustration is the number one necessity and profitability of supernatural speed. Peter toiled all night. And caught nothing. Suddenly, he was washing his nets in frustration. And then, the master encountered him. And he caught fishes that the net could not hold. He escaped frustration as he got speed. The escape of stagnation. And frustration. Number two is the recovery of wasted and lost years. When God gives you speed, the years that the canker worm ate, and the things Satan stole from your life can be recovered, can be restored. The recovery, yes, the recovery of wasted and lost years. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 and in verse 8, David inquired of the Lord and he shall I pursue after these troops, shall I overtake them? And, and he answered him, pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover. So there must be pursuit before there is recovery. There must be the race before you catch what is yours. You must pursue, you must run to get it back. You see, that speed is necessary for the recovery of what the devil took from you. Maybe by now your life is meant to be forward there and you are here. God will give you recovery. Recovery. And I, we serve a God of recovery. Two days ago, I, I came across the news of the birth of four children born at once, quadruplets, all males, all identical image of each other says so that's an occurrence out of 70 worldwide in history that's the kind of thing that god can do you are trusting god for a fruit of the womb for eight years and then you gave birth to four at once is that not a chapter almost closed the recovery, the recovery, the recovery, the recovery, the recovery of your mantles, the recovery of your fire, the recovery of your oil, the recovery of your impact, the recovery of your level can happen by supernatural speed. And it's coming for somebody. Number three is the escape of enemy orchestration. The escape of enemy orchestration. What I mean by this particularly is supernatural speed will make you escape what is pursuing you. 
What pursued other people in your family and caught them? You can escape it. What tied others you know down? You can run from it. You can escape it. The escape of enemy orchestrations, negative history, negative family patterns. God can give you speed until the devil can see your brake light. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14 Paul the apostle was speaking and he said zero time brethren I count on myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting the things those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus I disconnect from what is pursuing me because I'm pressing towards what is in front of me. I disconnect from what is behind me. Because I'm pressing towards what is in front of me. You are running so fast. What is pursuing you couldn't catch you. That's the meaning. In the realm of the spirit you are so fast. What is trying to tie you down couldn't catch you. Couldn't reach you. You heard the situation of the antelope in East Africa. That one morning the antelope wakes up. To say, or the, the lion wakes up and says, I must run than the fastest antelope today. Otherwise, I will end in hunger. And then, the antelope says, I must run faster than the fastest lion today. Otherwise, I will die of hunger. I will, I, I will die as a pre, as a victim. This is the point. Even if you are an antelope, if you can run, you will escape the lion. That is, it doesn't matter what is after you. If you have speed, you can escape. It doesn't matter what is after you. If God lays his hands on you and there is a speed, a supernatural spiritual speed, you can escape it. And I announce to someone here, all around the world, wherever you are watching, connected, what is pursuing you in this season will never be able to catch up with you because God is about to give you a speed that will make the devil never to see your break light in the name of Jesus. Finally, okay, number four. What is the profitability? of supernatural speed it is the generation of impact people of speed are people of impact slow people make no impact impact can never be made in sluggishness it is speed Paul the apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 23 to 27 he said in a race start from go to 24 know ye not that they which run in a race run but one received the prize to receive the prize you must run you must run you want to make hole in the ground and you have water in two holes, hose pipes. One is flowing very, very gently. Another one is coming with speed and force. Which one will make hole on the ground first? The one with speed and force. People don't go to the battlefield with bullet in the hand to throw at the enemy. It's not catapult. They put it inside high velocity rifles and high velocity equipment and when it is released from there anybody on suicide mission can stand in the front of it do you understand what i'm talking about that is impact is makeable with speed you cannot be crawling and make impact in life you can't be sluggish and make impact in life that is why the devil impacts a lot of people with sluggishness of life and i break that spell right now in the precious name of Jesus, whatever is causing you. Now, for example, you want to build a house that you need 25 million to build and you have 
500,000. If your inflow is 50,000 a month versus your inflow is 2 million a month, under which condition will you finish the house faster? Very easily. I mean, when the inflow is flowing faster, the impact is more solid. If it is lives you want to touch, if it, is, if it is evangelism you want to do, if it is whatever you want to do, when it is flowing faster, the impact is also faster. And all truths are parallel. That is why those who are slow in class don't go to the top. Those who can't understand what is being taught, they don't rise high. Speed is necessary for impact. And I decree today, the supernatural speed, spiritual speed, and every manner of speed needed for impact is released on you right now in the name of Jesus. Finally, number five. Why is speed, supernatural speed necessary? It's for the fulfillment of destiny on schedule. The fulfillment of destiny on schedule. To hit target on time. To fulfill your life's purpose within your lifetime. <laughs> right? To fulfill life's purpose within lifetime. Because it is possible to have so much purpose at the end of the time. You know, there are people who have more money at the end of the month and there are people who have more month at the end of the money. <laughs> the, the, the money has ended, but the month has not finished. <laughs> All right? Since we don't have eternity to fulfill destiny, to do the things to do on time, very, very important. Supernatural speed. That is what is coming upon you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And there are two keys I'll give to us today that is relevant for speed. Number one is decision against stagnation. My life can't be sluggish and slow. Prodigals, the prodigal son said, I will arise. Luke chapter 15, verse 17, 18. I will arise. How many higher servants of my father have enough bread to eat and to spare? I will arise. Decision. Paul the apostle said, I follow after if I may but apprehend. I press. It's a choice. I press. I am, run, I am under pressure. We'll talk about this in detail later. One person can lead a horse to the stream. One thousand people cannot force it to drink water if it is not convinced. Huh? <laughs> if it's not convinced, you are just wasting your time. So every form of acceleration begins with a decision. Nobody stands from a seat until he chooses to stand. Nobody takes the first step until he chooses to take, to make, to, to, to take the first step. Number two is connection with the accelerator. Or connection with the God of all acceleration. Better that way. Because ordinary accelerator might look like the throttle of a car. But God accelerates our lives. Connection with the God of all acceleration. For they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. They shall run. You cannot be tied.
died to the God of progress and die in stagnation. The word go is inside the, the name God. G-O-D is God. The first two letters is go. S-A-T-A-N is Satan. The first three letters is sat. Satan is a master of stagnation. And Almighty God is a sponsor of acceleration. Don't waste your life. Connect and connect strongly with God. Don't play church. One of the things that the COVID virus situation has come to do for the world is to let the world know that nothing here is permanent. And to let the world know that the system of this world is subject to failure any day. And that the only person and thing and system that does not fail is the system of the kingdom and the almighty God. Anything else can fail. Medicine can fail. Doctors can fail. There's therapeutic failure. Where you are treating somebody for something and you never knew it was something else. You are treating and thought it was an asthmatic condition and then you are dealing with left ventricular failure. That is presenting in a similar way. Governments can fail. And when they fail, they lie like at the frequency of liars. The only person and the only system that can fail is God. This situation that the world has passed through is meant to bring us into a deeper relationship with God. If there is any acceleration you are going to look for, it is running into God in a deeper dimension. I welcome you to the first night of the 2020 Destiny Recovery Convention. Anything we are going to be doing from today till the end of the convention is try to unravel what are the secrets of speed? What do I do to get speed? What are the triggers? What, what, how, do I, how do I move from where I am to where I need to be? That is, we'll spend the rest of the week dealing with that one by one and the Lord will help us. Lift your voice, be upstanding in all our locations, wherever you are, be upstanding and just lift up your voice and lift up your voice and let's worship him let's honor him let's adore him father we give you the praise father we give you the honor father we give you the adoration blessed be your name adoration to your name worship to your name el shaddai el ayon mekadesh kereniesha we love you we adore you magnify him honor him adore him worship him Lift your voice, speak to God. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. In the name of Jesus. Very, very, very quickly. Two prayers tonight. First of all, Father, I am coming to you to solidify my connection. I may have been very far from you before today but I come before you I surrender myself I surrender my life I surrender myself completely to you have your way in my life 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 fulfill your purpose in my life fulfill your purpose in my life come into my life take your place in my life lift your voice and speak to God have your way in my life fulfill your purpose in my life